Welcome back to The Zero Podcast, where we talk about lifting, coaching, and more. You can learn more about Zero by going to www.zero.com.au. That's Zero with a W. We are also proudly sponsored by Establishment Coffee. Head to establishmentcoffee.com.au. Use the code ZERO25 for 25% off and free shipping. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's what all the cool kids say. And if you're on Spotify, hit that five-star review. We love it. Enjoy the show now. All right, give us give us your honest review on the Alien movie, James. Yeah, I want to hear it too. Okay, honest review. You guys know me. I'm not really a cinematic uh, kind of guy. I like a fast-paced, don't-have-to-think-much movies. So it was a little bit slow, if I'm being honest. But that movie is well ahead of its time. I can't believe that movie was 45 years ago. Mm. Um, it was really cool. I felt like I, I enjoyed it more because I knew a little bit about the backstory. I knew a lot of the characters. Because, uh, yeah, Bridget's been fucking in my ear for the last two <laughs> years about it. Yes. Uh, um, so, on a scale of uh, 10, enjoyment-wise, I'm going to give it a solid 8.5. Nice. It's pretty high. Yeah. Nice. I actually really enjoyed it. Nice. Yeah, because Bridget, you already put it in my head that I won't enjoy it. It'll be slow. Yeah, because you like action movies. Yeah. But I was like, oh, this is cool. But I just thought it was a hit of its time. It's it's yeah, nice to go into something, something with low expectations mm. than to go into something with high expectations and then be let down. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I just think it was crazy that I got to watch a movie 45 years ago, Bridget's family's entire favorite movie on the big screen. Mm. That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. It's crazy that Bridget saw that when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> You're on her 20th birthday too. <laughs> I'm allowed to. She fucking roasted me for being old the other day. <laughs> uh, I, cop- I copy and pasted that email, by the way. So that was the font in the previous email. I didn't actually yeah. put it that big. No, no, no. I know that. <laughs> I know that. The backstory is Bridget sent me an email and the text was massive. And I roasted her for it. And then she roasted me back for being old. <laughs> Uh, All right, we're back. We've been away for a while. Uh, Meg and I went to America for like a month. And then James and Bridget saw us as we were going out. Oh, we were coming in. You guys were going out. Yeah, saw each other at the at Brisbane Airport. What are the chances of that? I wish I (laughs) I wish I texted you like half an hour or an hour earlier because we so we landed in Brisbane and uh, we I can't think what what happened. Um, my uh, mum was running an hour late, one hour and a half late because of the traffic. Yeah. It, yeah. It was about eight, eight thirty, which is peak traffic. So we just had time to kill for ages. Yeah. True. Yeah. So we so went we had up, heaps of time as well. Yeah. We went upstairs to get uh, a coffee and stuff. And I'm like, I think Bridget and James are leaving this morning. And then I saw there were two barley flights on the screen. One was like at that time. And the other one was two hours later. Excuse me. And I was like, where are you guys? And you're like downstairs. I'm like, oh, we just missed you. Otherwise, we would have seen you just before you went through customs. What are the chances, though? <laughs> Waving through the glass. <laughs> yeah, and then I got I got a week of uh, being the receptionist. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> then I pissed off to Wales, and now here we are. Nice. <laughs> All right. What should we start with? Quotes. Okay, can I go first? Yes. Because it's a bad quote, but it's just kind of... Um, Follows on from the our America story. Thomas and I listened to some audiobooks while we were over there, and we listened to the whole Ned Brockman one. And Thomas was super skeptical at first because Ned Brockman is, I think he's like 23, 24 years old. And he's like, How can someone this young write an autobiography? I'm like, Give him a chance. He's really inspiring. Is he and only that young? He's really young. Yeah. That's um, what running all those kilometers does to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ages we- you, weathers you. Yeah. And then he ended up really liking the book, right? I, I, I didn't. Love the book. I was inspired by the story. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like anyone that like is is pushing past what they should be capable of doing. Yes, he's relentless. So I'm just pulling up a random quote from his Instagram. Less than 100 years from now, you're done, finished. Your possessions, achievements, body, all of it gone. Nothing will remain of your insignificant existence besides your actions today, which will ripple, however small, for eternity throughout the lives of many. Yeah, so you didn't write that. So th- this is the annoying thing. I've heard that though. <laughs> Ned Brockman. The, the, this is the annoying thing, right? You, you go, you go look at videos of him like running and, and talking and be like, yeah, just fucking ran across fucking Australia. It's fucking awesome, eh? And then you listen to his book and he's like, yes, it was quite superfluous. <laughs> like, no, this, this wasn't written by this kid. Oh. And, but I get it. I get it. Like, you, you know, 
No, yeah, it, it was it was an inspiring story. So I he had a ghostwriter that wasn't on the same page as him. I like that. <laughs> I if like I that. ever get a ghostwriter, they need to be a bogan <laughs> <laughs> so they can talk like me. Uh, um, Bridget, what's your quote? I don't have one yet. That's good. James, <laughs> James what's your quote? Uh, it's kind of cheesy but corny, but I like the context of it. It was in this uh, competition, this fight competition, and the guy who won, when he won, he said on the microphone, uh, why did you, like, they were talking about, uh, oh, what got you here today? And he goes, nah, I want what all men want. I just wanted it more. Yeah, no. And I was like, fuck, Ooh. that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've said that a few times. Yeah, yeah. like in the heat it's of the moment. It. Yeah, that's He's, sick. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. That's really cool. Uh, my quote comes from, we were, where were we? We were road tripping between two major cities in, in Texas. We were driving from... Austin to we, Dallas? Yeah, Austin to Dallas. And in between is Waco. And in Waco is the uh, Dr. Pepper Museum. <laughs> and as you know, I'm a Dr. Pepper aficionado. <laughs> uh, and when I heard that along with the entry came a free Dr. Pepper, <laughs> we couldn't say no. <laughs> so we stopped at this Dr. Pepper museum. Anyway, learning learning about the history because they Dr. Pepper is older than Coca-Cola. Like they're, they're the original uh, like commercialized sweet soft drink because soft drinks originally – Sit down, children. Soft drinks originally uh, were like touted – it was carbonated water that was meant to heal like every disease – and then they started making it sweet and then it turned into soft drink. Anyway, the guy that took over Dr. Pepper became the CEO uh, for, for ages and ages up until he died, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, uh, was praised because he's just a like, super nice guy. Everyone, everyone loved him. He was universally adored uh, and kind to everyone. And there was just this tiny little quote plaque in the museum that I saw and I really liked it. And it says, no one of us is as smart as all of us. Which is just mm. along the lines of like, we're always better off working together. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I yeah. like that. Yeah, it's the same it thing I say when I'm when I'm setting up zeros and uh, getting new business partners, uh, because I, I'm I'm not out there for me. I'm not trying to build this for me. It's about us, and it's like a, it's always bigger to have a smaller slice of a bigger pie than have a small pie all to yourself. Mm. That's very cool. That's nice. cool. So, is he a doctor? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, I think that's why it was called Dr. Pepper because it oh. comes from like a medical background. Of course. And is that yeah. why it has that medicine-y kind of taste to it? No, that's because you add cough syrup to it. <laughs> <laughs> that's called no, lean. I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think that's like a uniquely Australian problem. What do you mean? So Australians hate Dr. Pepper, right? Because whatever cough syrup was in Australia tastes like Dr. Pepper. Like it's got that same sort of mm. cher- so cherry flavor. So cough syrup doesn't... Tastes like that universally? I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. But I, I've like I didn't really have cough syrup in Australia, so I, I don't know what it tastes like. So to me, Dr Pepper just tastes awesome. It's, it's delicious. Yeah, do, that's the best. It drink. is delicious. I think you either like it or don't like how some people mm. like Korea, coriander. Yeah. Or, I call it. Like so, I call it cilantro. 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 <laughs> is it, isn't that a genetic thing? It's definitely cilantro yeah, because then there's the coriander seed. Don't like it. Mm. Apparently, it tastes like uh, dish soap to them. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, the more coriander, the better. Come on. Ugh. Yeah, no, it's, it. it's. You don't an, like it, man? It's but you guys, you guys all herb. like coriander and all like Dr. Pepper? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's got to be something to do with how we taste it because yeah. I can't stand both. I, yeah, I don't know. I love, uh, you, know, in, you know, in Wales, well, I know in Scotland, uh, they have like cherry flavored things everywhere. Just you know how here you get coconut no sugar and then it's like yeah, vanilla yeah. coconut no sugar. Yes, but in the UK, is it still they've got oh, cherry they've flavored got everything? Black cherry Pepsi Max. Yeah, bro. It's Damn. Fuck. It's the greatest flavor on earth. How good? It sounds delicious. Yeah, because cherry Coke is good, but black cherry, doc, uh, black cherry Pepsi Max is just mind blowing, game changing. Uh, it's more of a work drink. <laughs> it yeah. has become a work yeah. <laughs> you're, you're more of an iron brew guy <laughs> <laughs> Made out of steel girders Do you know what right. blew my mind when I found out that root beer is just sarsaparilla? Oh really? Yeah Yeah Sars- that, that pissed me off Yeah How, how did you not know that? Well because I, I only found out when I went to America uh, d- <laughs> Well because they call it root beer right? Yeah, yeah I didn't realise it was it's from different. the sarsaparilla root You guys yeah. like sarsaparilla? Yes You like it? I do now now that I know it's just root beer Yeah um, <laughs> No, well, it's kind of like it's it's one notch down from licorice to me like i can mm. eat licorice but i would choose not to yeah okay. yeah mm-hmm. i only like small glasses of it if you have too much it's too sickly I uh, think. yeah on the rocks yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> on the rocks <laughs> so you guys are when you guys are traveling well h- hold the phone sorry bridget 
<sighs> oh, yeah. Not, you're not skirting out of this one. All right, here's something cringe for you. It's like, oh, no, I got a toe <laughs> infection. I can't do a quote. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. The essence of barley is found in its simplicity. Yeah, <laughs> kind of wish we didn't do quotes, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love my thing. All right. What were you going to say, James? I was just going to say, what should we get into? I want to I wanna recap your, your trip. It looked fucking awesome. I want to recap your trip. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's recap yours. Um, we trained probably about, I'm trying to make it relevant to the podcast. <laughs> 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 trained in three weeks. Six, seven times? Probably a bit more, maybe seven. You guys look like you trained a fair bit. We tried to. We tried to make time for it because you just feel a lot better afterwards. Definitely. Because they're long days. Yeah. Oh, I'm gone. Keep going. They're long days and you – yeah, that's good. Thank you. They're long days and you walk around way more. You know, usually at home you drive from place to place. We'll be like, oh, 40-minute walk? Let's just walk in. (laughs) (laughs) Just do stuff that I usually would never do. (laughs) Um, You see, that's a different – philosophy than me my philosophy is i was eating 14 million calories a day and i was turning into a fat but you weren't (laughs) we were withering away at the at the beginning because we were walking so much (laughs) i was like oh my god i've never withered away in my life i I cannot really Um, um and so new york and stuff was really fast paced and we were just doing stuff non-stop and walking around. And then the second half was a little bit more relaxed because Texas is quite spread out. So well, we any, hired a car. Anyone who's ever walked next to me knows that New York was not fast-paced. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't walk very fast. Oh, okay. No, like the, I, I the, saunter. the, the things around You're saying us. we did a lot. Yeah. We, did, we did a lot. Um, so, yeah, we started off with New York and more city-like things like Washington, D.C. And oh, then in on. the middle. <laughs> Stop skipping so far ahead. I'm not. I'm <laughs> giving us a, a break I like, how you, I, like how, I like how you, <laughs> you skipped over the Big Apple. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle between New York and Texas was Lily's comp. That was the main reason why we went over because she did Ghost Clash. All right, go ahead, Thomas. <laughs> well, the whole point is we're meant to talk about the trip. <laughs> like the whole thing, yeah. every setting. We're going to be here for ages if yeah. we do that. That's what this podcast <laughs> is. It's a review of our trip and James and Bridget's trip. Okay, okay. Can I do the first part then? Yeah, well, if you're going to talk about it. New York City. Um, I, I've been there twice. This, is, this was my third time and Thomas had never been there. So I was really, really excited for him to go. Well, knowing that he hates cities. Um but we still had a great time and we did all the typical touristy things. We uh, went up this building so we could get a good look at Empire State Building and what's the other one? Chrysler Building. Rockefeller? No, Chrys- Chrysler, Chrysler Building. Chrysler Building. All I was there for was movies. Yeah. So I wanted to see the Chrysler Building because it gets blown up in Godzilla. Nice. I wanted to see all the bridges from the Spider-Man games and all the city parts from the Spider-Man games. Basically, all I knew about New York was the Spider-Man games <laughs> and Spider-Man in general. And what movie was Flatiron Building in? Uh, it's in every single movie of all time. Well, that one was under construction, so we didn't actually get to properly yeah. see Flatiron Building. I'm pretty sure the Flatiron Building is the Daily Bugle in Spider-Man. Oh, okay, cool. You guys went to the Brooklyn Bridge as well? Mm. Did you guys go under it? I told you to go see the great one of the most iconic skate spots in the well, world. Well, you know Brooklyn Banks is... Um, it destroyed, right? Oh, no. Yeah, so the original Brooklyn Banks that mm-hmm. we know, like yeah. all, all my favorite BMX videos, half of them have scenes from Brooklyn Banks. Mm. Uh, that's that's not like that anymore. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, no, so it got shut down maybe five to ten years ago. Mm. And then there was obviously massive uproar from the skating and BMX community. And so they rebuilt it into like a purpose-built skate area. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not what you remember. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh, Why fuck. did they shut it down? Because they didn't want people skating there. I think it was just part of renovating that area of the city. I don't think it was actively to get rid of skaters and stuff. Yeah. <coughs> I think it was probably That's just good. old and run down and wanted to make better use of the land or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we saw more iconic skate and BMX <laughs> spots in Philly. Yeah. There are a lot, lot of around yeah, that. Yeah, because you went to Love Square. Uh, we only drove through the Love Square. So when we were in Philadelphia, it was... Pretty much pissing with rain the so whole heavily. time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We got a small break in the rain where I could run up the rocky stairs. <laughs> <laughs> do, do my scene. Had like a handful of Philly cheesesteaks. Yeah, yes. and that was it. We were just in and out for a day. Yeah, true. Wait, so in New York, did you guys have a chopped cheese? No, I, it was on my list to do. I've seen. I've watched like so many YouTube videos yeah. about how good the chopped cheeses are. Because apparently, it's a, a huge debate: a chopped cheese versus a Philly cheesesteak. Really? Yeah. So you ask you ask someone from the is uh, you ask from this, from New York and they're 
they swear by chopped cheese and you go to Philly in there. How is a chopped cheese different? Uh, I think I think it's more so like Philly cheesesteak is slices of steak. Mm. A chop sandwich is like the same thing, but then they just mash it up with, uh, yeah. with knives. So it's more like mince. Yeah. Almost. Mm. We didn't have one, but I'm definitely on the chopped cheese side because mm. I know that Cardi B loves the chopped yeah, cheese. Yeah, from a bodega. <laughs> yeah. She likes them from, from a the Harlem. Bronx. Yeah, from, from the, the Bronx. Bodega. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you so even said that right. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke with an American accent the whole time. <laughs> Uh, no, we didn't get that, but we did. We did the pastrami sandwich. We did the pizza. What? What other? Yeah, I was well, loving all your food yeah. rating posts. Thanks. Me and Bridget. Me and Bridget were fucking glued <laughs> to the man. <laughs> what else did we do? Yeah. So if go on. Go on to Meg's Instagram. You can see our food ratings. Do you have them highlighted? The yes, I yeah. do. Oh, nice. they're, they're Thomas's food ratings, not mine. Because okay. I'm a really kind food critic Me- and he's Meg like would give everything five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's and that was very stringent. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but New York was less disappointing than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really wanted to see the things. I'd be happy to not really ever go back. But that's because, like Meg was saying, I'm not a city guy. Like, I've been to London once and I'm happy never go to back to go back to London. And America, you know how everyone on podcasts and everything is like, oh, this country's gone to, to the toilet kind of thing. Mm. I don't know why I make every American accent. <laughs> but <laughs> everyone complains that America's gone to shit. It, it's kind of true. Like yeah. compared to, when did you last go, Bridget? Like I five was, years ago? 2019. Yeah, pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yeah. like San Francisco uh, was nice. And now like we were walking, we were waiting for a restaurant reservation we walked into the restaurant to try and get early they're like not a chance so we went back to the car to keep listening to a book and there's a guy just smoking the l on the side of the mm. smoking a crack pipe just God. hanging out people on like there's a massive fentanyl crisis and like they, yeah. they take whatever drugs laced with fentanyl and they pretty much fold in half mm. at the mm-hmm. waist and just like stand there like just zombies slump there, yeah we saw like some he would have been some drug lord doing a deal just in the middle of the street like it was, mm, it, it, that's kind of scary. The amount of homelessness is just insane, yeah. and schizophrenia in, in New York City. Like every second person just walking around yelling at nothing, pretty wild. Scary, eh? But Texas didn't really feel like that. Texas was awesome. Yeah, Texas, something else. Yeah. Um, anyway, still in New York. Mm-hmm. Meg obviously found all these places for us to eat because I'm useless and do absolutely no research. I just show up and go with the flow. Um, but the problem is she finds them on TikTok. And that's not Meg's fault. It's TikTok's fault. So you go out and there's like 10 million people and they're all like little TikTok girls and they're all going, <laughs> oh my God, I like, I was, I'm a sophomore and literally <laughs> this guy texted me and he was like, oh my God, literally. And I was like, fuck. This is stuck thing. in line for he, an he hour. He starts to think, he starts to believe the place is going to be bad just because it w- went viral on Instagram or TikTok. You don't know that. Give it a chance. It might still very well be good. Okay. How did any other food place get famous? We like, we ate very well. <laughs> but I the feel mo- like they've had this discussion before. <laughs> the more the TikTok it was, the worse it was. We that is not true. We waited in the freezing cold and rain. <laughs> okay. Riddle me this for then. What? one hour. Why was your for favorite? For a sweet... Pe- sh- 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 <laughs> for one hour... <laughs> For the Swedish candy shop that was like going to the movies with the candy bar. No like regrets. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh. Tell me this. Why was your favorite pizza the most like viral food experience? The industry pizza is really big on Instagram. Yeah, but that's and you older, loved that. Wait, older where, than TikTok. Where, where was industry pizza? Brooklyn. It yeah, was, oh, so it was before York. the basketball they have, game. Yeah, they have two, two mm-hmm. locations, Manhattan and Brooklyn. Yeah. Where, where do you think the best pizza in America is? Uh, I had, um, it was in Wisconsin. It's With a different Carter. style. Is it like a Detroit style pizza? Is that what I'm thinking of? Like a deep it's like, dish? It's like, like a, no, like that's Chicago. Detroit, Detroit's a square pizza. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm okay. thinking mm. of. The yeah. square yeah. pizza is really good. We had that as well. In yeah. Red Street pizza. Oh yeah, we did too. The deep dish pizza is really good in Chicago. So well. New York style pizza is the best? Well, I don't really like pizza that much. And the pizza that we had at that place was unreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was amazing. Found it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm not saying that i'm just saying tiktok's worse yes just okay. anything like little tiktok people are into <laughs> anyway <laughs> the statue of liberty was sick mm-hmm. didn't go to it just went on the free ferry, the ferry. and looked at it staten island ferry uh, because if you don't know the exchange rate is terrible and we spent about four million dollars trying to breathe over there <laughs> so expensive <laughs> fucking horrible Anyway, hi, like a highlight of new york especially for cj and james is that we went and watched the king 
Mm. Goat, shoot a few hoops. How good. It's pre- pretty unreal to actually like I'm I'm not I don't follow modern basketball so I don't really know that much. But like you could just see how far ahead of everyone he was. Yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. Like unreal. And you know he's the oldest player in the NBA. Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. 39 or 40. Yep. Oh yeah. my gosh. He's going to be the first I know I keep talking. About, he's going to be the first guy to ever play with his son in the league. Oh. Yeah. I, yeah, I, it was it was crazy because so we were watching, well, first of all, you can tell them. First of all, <laughs> we had two games booked while we were over there. Basketball game, so to watch the Lakers, uh, to watch LeBron, and then uh, an ice, ice hockey. hockey game. And Meg got her wires crossed. So the basketball game was at 6 p.m. and the ice hockey game was at 7. She thought the, the basketball was at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. So like we're sitting on the train at like, I'm like, we're like, we should go a little bit early. And we're sitting on the train. I'm like, it's really not a lot of people going to this game. <laughs> it's going to be quiet. It's because it already started. Oh, no. <laughs> we were only late by we, uh, five minutes. Yeah, oh, that's we, right. we, we managed to get in like at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. So we missed, we missed like the first 10 or 15 minutes. It wasn't bad. So wait, where was the game? Barclay. In Brooklyn. Barclay. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool that you got to uh, watch a game in New York. Like that's the home of basketball. Like, I think that's why it costs so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I don't want to think about that. Um, and yeah, so they were they were constant, consistently ahead by like twenty points. And then at one point, um, they were versing the net Brooklyn Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, Brooklyn mm-hmm. Nets. And they tra- the Brooklyn Nets went hard and caught up by like ten. And mm-hmm. then LeBron just switched on. Like the whole game, he was just walking. And then he switched on. He started running, dunked a bunch of times, and then just went three, 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 three until they were like twenty points ahead again. And then he just slowed down. And he didn't even play in the last quarter, right? Mm. He just kind of relaxed after that. Yeah, he stopped about 10 minutes out. But legit, it was like he switched on and didn't miss. It was just three-pointer, 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 all in the space of like two minutes. That's crazy. Mm. I love that because he's he's such a generational talent. But I love that like someone who doesn't follow – like if you showed me your favorite BMXer, I'd be fucking blown away. It's like you don't have to understand uh, greatness to appreciate it. Yeah. That's so cool. Yep, yep, yep. That Anyth- was awesome. Anything else super cool in New York? New York. Um, we well went. The, the w- food was really awesome. We went to a natural history museum, but it was it, it okay. was it was Easter, and everywhere we went, the lines were like unseasonably long. Mm. It took like an hour to get into anything. Yeah. And we were pressed for time that day, so we only get to, got to hang out in the museum. We went to Broadway and we watched Book of Mormon. That was so good. Thomas loved it. I could not stay awake. I probably slept through half of it because <laughs> I think the the flying had caught up to me because it was that was like three days after we landed, right? Yeah, and it was at ten p.m. or something. Yeah, the Stupid. show was really late too. I could not stay awake. <laughs> Actually, that one wasn't too late. It wasn't ten p.m. Seven thirty or something. Yeah, it was the comedy show in Austin. We went to Joe Rogan's comedy club, yeah. mm. and uh, that show was ten thirty. Wow. That was a nightmare. <laughs> um, it would have been – so I know I'm skipping ahead. That would have been way better if the reverse order of the comedians happened. For sure. Because they got way worse towards the end. And the yeah. last one just wouldn't shut up and she was so bad. She Her finishing act uh, – uh, It was the Love Shack. She, so she's like, this is my rendition of the guy from the Love Shack. And so she just sang the whole song in her head but then only spoke – the guy that's, you know, the crazy guy in the B-52s yeah. that's like, the love shark. She just spoke those parts. And, and so she's she's just like dancing on stage and then just yelling those parts. And it was not funny. She was did the anybody ho- laughing? No. Oh. She did the whole song. Oh she didn't stop God. once. She didn't falter once. Oh was this God. at the comedy store? The uh, uh, mo- comedy mothership. mothership. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, the mothership. Because have you seen how they get those kind of people on? No. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of like uh, comedians standing outside. And whoever runs the night comes out and just randomly picks comedians. No way. Oh. Them, yeah. That's oh, crazy. well, that, that makes sense because there's this, this guy with, like, some sort of hormone disorder mm-hmm. who, like, looks like a little kid, but he's 20-something. Mm-hmm. And he was at the door, like, putting our phones in those little anti-phone things. He's kind of famous, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, So we went into, like, a small intimate room, which it has famous people for sure, but... Uh, from what I understand, it's where people use it as like a testing ground to mm. see if their material is any good. Because then there's a much bigger room that had sold out and that actually had that night. Joe, Joe Rogan got up and did some stuff. We saw, I can't remember his name. He was one of my favorites though. Randall, uh, isn't it? Oh, I can't remember. You, you, have you guys seen Dumb and Dumber? Yep. Yeah. The cop from Dumb and Dumber. That's like, 
drinks the piss. Oh, yeah. He's a comedian. We saw him. Wow. <laughs> so that, no way. We, we were watching and I'm like, fuck, this guy's so familiar. And I couldn't put my finger on it. And then we were trying to find them on Instagram and stuff afterwards. And we Googled him. I'm like, that's the cop from Dumb and Dumb. No way. <laughs> yeah. You loved him. I think he's from your generation. He's so autistic. It was so <laughs> good. Because <laughs> it, it wasn't, you know how some of them are like, they put on a persona purposely. Mm-hmm. It, it was that. It was like, he put on this like, old grumpy sort of persona and it was so good <laughs> and there was this guy with like a stupid hat that had all light up things and every comedian absolutely destroyed him <laughs> yeah. it was actually that guy picked on you as well he did he said i wasn't paying attention to yeah. his act oh. he was like you're not all there and i'm like i'm here <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that uh. was good mm. anyway anything else from new york um not particularly just that it was really good because although it was rainy we we got to walk around the, gi- um, the gym was cool. Which gym? Temple? The, yeah, it was just like a big commercial gym. The gyms in America are pretty amazing. Which was the one that had the... Everything was black and it had the cool green lighting at the top on the ceiling? So that place is called Fusion Gyms? Is yeah. that in Philly? Yeah, and yeah. so that guy has set up these like ultra gyms. Um, but the reason I really wanted to go there is because he buys his stuff from China as well. Yeah. And all the, all the, new, st- all, all the new stuff that we are getting, I saw that he had at his gym. Oh, had, had renditions of it, uh, so I wanted to test them out. Yeah, mad. Like which ones? All those cable machines. Oh, I didn't actually try the cable machines. Yeah, they were they were good. Okay, cool. They were good. So we're getting uh, slightly different versions of of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, what the the big takeaway I, I took away from that gym, and then we went to a like an actual super gym called Oh uh, um, in Dallas Absolute Recomp or tot- something Recomp something Recomp. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Oh my it's, God. It's all Panada equipment. Do you guys know Panada? It's, no. like, it's an Italian brand. Oh. It's mm. got like, f- they brag about their fine Italian leather on the on mm. the equipment. But it was like a multi, multi, multi million dollar gym. Like, a, yeah. wow. they had a powerlifting section. It had like six Alico racks, mono. But that was just in the corner. That, and that, that was, was like a little bit. The no one uses section. Ironically, so there was a sick tricep machine, like an overhead tricep thing. And I was loving it. And I looked over and there was a guy like doing this over the top setup for the squat. And he's like kissing his cross and doing a sign <laughs> of the cross. Do you know any famous powerlifters that do that? Yeah. we. Uh, oh, we spoke about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I looked over and I'm like, oh, this guy's me. I, I wasn't impressed. And I thought it was 200 kilos. I'm like, guy, calm down. And I walked over and it was 250. And I was like, okay, that's that's all right. Turns out, turns out it was, what's his name? Sean Noriega. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, if I knew who it was, I would have said said hello. But it was just interesting. Uh, but yeah, the powerlifting area was just like an afterthought compared to the rest of the stuff wow. in this gym. It was, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, I can't even explain how big and over the top it was. Mm. Anyway, after after New York, we drove up just to say hello to a friend of mine that through Instagram uh, to connect to c- c- connect to c- Connecticut 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 <laughs> uh, to. See Ryan Gleason, Team GPT. Drove like two, uh, two and a half, three hours out of the way, and then three hours after that to Philly just to say hi to this guy. Uh, so that was cool. Cool to see. Uh, like, this is an action. This is the only powerlifting gym we went to besides um, Boss Barbell. We didn't go to powerlifting gyms. We went to like commercial yeah. gyms. Uh, so he's got a he's got you know an independent powerlifting gym. They run tons of uh, US USAPL comps. So it's cool to go see people like us doing their thing over there. Uh, then where do we go? Washington. Philly and Washington. I'm not into American politics, but man, it was cool to see all like the American things. So I specifically wanted to go to Washington to see the Abraham Lincoln statue because of Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. And also Statue of Liberty, Planet of the Apes too. Again, I just see things because I like movies. <laughs> uh, but like seeing the, you can, you can hate on American politics and the president and everything. I don't care. The White House is cool. Like really cool. Yeah, yeah. That whole monumental area is, is cool. Yeah, Washington was awesome. Good Mexican food. Mm, really? Yeah, Good yeah. tacos. Yeah. We had awesome breakfast tacos. Yeah. Meg's really anti Mexican food and and I made her eat it wherever we went. Yeah. It's because like I maintain Australia doesn't have Mexican food because we yeah. don't have Mexicans. I think that's <laughs> it. Like because the food over there was much, much Mexican more impressive. I thought, I thought the Mexican food would have been better in Texas. It was. It, it was. was. Oh, it was yeah, good yeah. everywhere. Mm. It was great in New York as well. Because mm. Tex-Mex, like some people find Tex-Mex better than authentic Mexican food, hey? Oh. Mm. We had a bit of both, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So from there, we went to any highlights in Philly or Washington? 
Um, besides cheesesteak? Washington, Washington, besides the breakfast tacos. And the Rocky Stairs? And the Rocky <laughs> Stairs, no. The no. Rocky Stairs was like the most horrible day. Yeah, like <laughs> by far. Even filming that, I kept yelling at Meg because she kept missing the shots. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like- This isn't good enough. And I'm like, I'm trying my best. <laughs> it was so windy and it was so cold. <laughs> like it was nasty. Yeah, that was nasty, a horrible nasty. day. Um, what was after Washington? Miami. Oh, we went to Miami. So obviously, yeah, went went for the Ghost Clash. Lily did amazing. Squatted 285, benched 130 or 127? 130. 127. 127. And then uh, was dead. we were deadlifting for fourth place, but she pulled her second and tore her hamstring. So uh, just a little tear, um, but enough to, to rule her out of the comp. So she matched her PB total. The second would have been easy and would have given her a 10 kilo PB and fourth place, but she ended up in fifth. Uh, so she's still stoked, still did amazing. Mm. Um, and at dinner, she was just saying that because she went last year um, and she was saying this time around, she just felt like she belonged rather mm. than last year that's just cool. being like, yeah. you know, a bit of a newbie. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's cool. I think you know, in, in discussions, like uh, the, obviously we spent a lot of time together in uh, at the animal cage and I, I've been coaching Lily for whatever eight months now and i haven't actually spent much time with her because i didn't know her real well before i started coaching her and she's in brisbane she doesn't come down here so i haven't actually had much face-to-face -face interaction with her in real life so america the, the the other time was the first time and we spoke a lot about that like she she was really feeling like um you know a side piece to the rest of the animal cage and after she realized that she was probably one of the highlight acts like she was the most loved person on that day and one of the most loved people are across the weekend i think it switched for her that she deserves to be there that's mm. very cool mm -hmm. but it, it, was, it was actually crazy so we were doing a warm-up squats and um she had had a, a facet joint tweak three weeks before so a tweak in her back so she was wasn't able she could barely walk for a week and then wasn't able to squat and deadlift basically the last few weeks of the comp prep. Uh, and she was warming up and depth had been an issue obviously in the past and I wasn't going to let it be an issue. So I'm like, you have to sink these. And she was sinking her squats and they were great. Her opener was 270 and she did 255 as the last warm up, and it was hard, like really hard. And we're like, okay, we're dropping your opener to that 255. Went out to change it, they're like, too late. So we missed it. We couldn't. We couldn't uh, change the opener, and we were all very nervous <laughs> because it was hard. And I'm like, she's either going to squat this high as hell or fail it. Uh, neither of us ever doubted her, but we we thought from there the day was not going to go how it was going to go, or at least I did in my head. But at the same time, you just have to take it as it is. But mm. sh she's an athlete. She's a mm. competitor. So we wrapped the shit out of her knees, sent her out there, and she nailed 275. Like it was easy. It was fast. It was deep. Um, came out, did 285, and uh, we ended up doing the third, right? 292 yes. or 290? 292. 292, yeah. She a And she got buried. <laughs> <laughs> she weighed in quite light. I saw that she weighed in Very light. 78 kilos. Yeah. So, you know, we had her on the podcast. She was saying she has to eat so much. Mm. Just the travel killed yeah. it. Like, just like the... the th they, they had a pretty nasty travel plan. Like, they did a lot of stopovers. Mm -hmm. So the travel itself, and she just sleeps the whole time, so she doesn't really get food in. The travel itself made her lose weight and then just trying to keep momentum while she was over there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, plus doing like touristy things, walking around. So yeah, she weighed in. And she was training at around 85, I think, and That's she weighed so in at crazy. 78. Yeah. Like Insane. significantly lighter. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to do a comp with her where – everything goes right because so far every comp she's done with me everything's gone wrong and she's still pb'd so <laughs> it would be so hard uh doing an international comp as a powerlifter uh, especially like someone like lily who's trying to maintain their weight uh because it's you know for the most part it's a user pay sport so yeah. you know pr other pro athletes get to go a month out yeah and mm. get to have a camp for a month kind of thing and you know they get really uh adjusted to everything so yeah. it's um i don't know i just think it's fucking awesome that she's still yeah. Goes out there and does a thing. We actually had a, I was playing the Ghost Clash the other day in the gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, Meg sent me a photo and I sent a photo of it to, to Lily and she's like, oh, it's so cool. Yeah, because I was like, oh, fuck, I'm uh, really cool. I only saw Lily's stuff and I wanted to see yeah. uh, everyone else. So it was cool to watch her do a thing on the on the international stage. Yeah. What do you think of the comp overall, Meg? I, I thought it was really, really impressive. Um, my impression only kind of changed after hearing your perspective because <laughs> you said 
this is meant to be like the biggest showcase of powerlifting. And I didn't realize it was that big of a deal. I didn't know Ghost Clash was such a big comp. Mm. Um, and so perhaps after hearing that, I was like, oh, maybe then I feel a little bit differently about it. But it ran really smoothly. Mm. And considering how many lifters there were, it didn't feel like, you know how um, some days – some days, some years, pro raw just drags on and on and on. It can be really hard for spectators to stay engaged. I didn't feel like that. And I just watched. I didn't help or anything. I just kind of sat and watched the whole day. Went really quickly. Um, amenities were nice. And the the spotted... <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it wasn't the typical powerlifting comp <laughs> <laughs> Um And the, uh, the spotters were really good on top of it. I'm trying to think what else, what else I can comment. Um, Was it just a one-day comp? Two. Two, two days. days. We only yeah. went the one day. Though. Yeah. There's like pro a, day. an amateur and a pro day. Yeah. yeah. I think it was run really well. Is that your perception, James, that they're trying to make it like the thing? Uh, well, that's what I thought. I th- my I thought it was the new Kern US Open. Mm. Remember when the Kern was the sure. the big thing? And now I think the Ghost Clash is the new, uh, you know, the yeah. new it competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- I think that's what they're trying to do. Like I don't pay attention really too much to American powerlifting that much. But I think that's what the goal is, just to make it like the thing. Mm. You know, they're trying to attract the biggest lifters and they get a lot of the biggest lifters. Uh, and with that said, there were so many positives. Like Meg said, it was really nicely run. Like it, it ran really smoothly, really on time. I felt like the refereeing was quite consistent. Mm-hmm. There, there, weren't, there was nothing there that I was like, this is bad refereeing. The only comment I'd make was the press calls were really long, mm-hmm. yeah. but they were consistently really long. Like it was predictable, which is nice. Uh, but for something trying to be the biggest comp, like it felt like running a comp here as in it was at a venue, but it was at a brewery and it, it just didn't, it felt like a backyard sort of comp. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, and it was so expensive. Yeah. Mm. 350 US dollars to enter. And you can't call it a pro day if the pros have to pay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like Lily had to pay 350 US. But then you don't get a coach's pass. So I had to pay 70 bucks to get in US, which is like 140 bucks. Maybe Jesus. a little bit less. Meg had to pay sixty bucks to to get in, because it was a brewery. They had food and stuff, which is cool. It's nice to keep the spectators like fed and entertained. But they had like tables around the platform that you could hire out, and a four seater table was three hundred and fifty bucks. But then you had to also pay to get in, like the the amount of money that it costs just to be there, mm. versus where it actually was. Because like you think something like our nationals pretty much all the money that's made by the entries goes to the venue. It's like we run it out of a big venue. Mm. Mm. And then all the money from the sponsorship goes to like the prize money. So the, the competition doesn't make a great deal of money. Whereas that venue, I guarantee was cheap as hell. The equipment wasn't new and fantastic and it would have been sponsored. So it, it did feel like a little bit of a, a money grab. Now, I don't know the inner workings. Uh, you know, maybe the entry money went towards the prizes. I don't know how much money they generated through that. Uh, but for for what's meant to be the biggest comp, it just felt like it could have been more of a show. Mm-hmm. The lifting was incredible. Yeah. Uh, the deadlift flight, the deadlift flight for the men was like 400, 400, 400, 400. It was like six people pulling over 400. Crazy. Besides Lily, what were some highlights? Denise Herber. Yeah. She pulled a new all time world record deadlift without a belt. She's really? so strong. What was like it? Three, two, 292, two? I think. Yeah. What was her weight class? She's in the 82s, yeah. ma- maybe the 75s. <laughs> She's little. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jamal Browner. He's the yeah. uh, Watching He's his deadlift, just incredible. Um, Is John, he the one that pulled 500 in training? Mm-hmm. Yes. Gym? Yeah. John Hack. John Hack is like yeah. just. His, his last deadlift was so fun to watch. Cause yeah, you, you posted that. You to don't me. think, yeah. you just didn't think it was going to come up. <laughs> just everything he does is. Did what, did what did he compete at? Under hundred or ninety? Uh, I think he went under hundred. I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure. Is he humongous for his weight class? Yes, because he looks huge. Yes, he's very muscular, mm. very jacked. He's little, but he's jacked. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know because he's kind of he's taller than me. Yeah, but he's like very lean, very jacked. Yeah. Um, Lily was a highlight for me though. What was Hunter Henderson like? She's lovely. Yeah. She's a really nice person. She's my favorite. I met her at the cage. Yeah. Yeah, the, she, she's she's lovely. She didn't have the best day. Yeah. She kind of yeah. missed, missed the kind of thing she's going Isn't she competing in bodybuilding? For. Isn't that why? Yeah, she's going to bodybuilding now. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Man, she, she did once before. Yeah. And then went back to powerlifting. 
She is huge for an under 82.5 lifter. Yeah. Right? They, the yeah. Americans, they just do with like the wildest cuts. Yeah. They do crazy, crazy, crazy cuts. I said this to Thomas and he's like, it's just because you're not wearing your glasses. But I thought everyone looked like really healthy, like muscular. Definitely not wearing glasses. <laughs> 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 you mean they, there weren't a lot of fatties is what you're saying. Shouldn't say fatties. No, I don't, <laughs> no, not even that. Like you can be healthy without being, uh, w- while looking like you have more body fat on you, but just like people were like shredded. Mm. Shredded. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, I, guess I mean, sh- shredded is not the picture of health. <laughs> but I also think, uh, Meg, you're at the you're at the pinnacle of a powerlifting comp. Yeah. So that's all the, you're on the and you're on the pro day. Yeah, yeah. True. True, they're, true. They're the people that made it without having heart attacks. <laughs> like oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like you even look at our zero pro, like the, the pro day, the elite. Yeah, day, you are like right. Everyone's mm. jacked. Yeah, These people like live and breathe it, so eventually they're yeah. gonna look like. That's what I loved about posting uh, photos on the zero page. I was like, "Fuck you, yeah, this looks sick," because mm. uh, you know there's still uh, that tiny bit of stigma that powerlifters are, you know. Uh, five reps is cardio, and then yeah. like I was like, "Look at all these fucking specimens." Yeah, it's yeah. just not true anymore. Mm. Yeah, but that was Miami. Miami otherwise sucked. We what gym did we end up going to? Um, we trained at a powerhouse. Powerhouse. Which, oh, is, yeah. which is just like a chain gym, like world gym. And it was sick. It was just really hot. I felt like, like I was losing you every two seconds because yeah, it was amazing. There was all these massive rooms and uh, everything was in different spots. Mm-hmm. But they had a, oh, they didn't really have a powerlifting section, no. but kind of had a powerlifting section. Not at all. Not at all, no. apparently. Mm. Uh, no, they didn't have combos and stuff. No, they didn't have, they just had power racks. Yeah. Uh, but we bumped into Steffi Cohen and we chatted to her for like oh, an no hour. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah, she was awesome. Yeah, I was just telling her about our stuff and our equipment and uh, she was telling me about what she wants to do over there. So it was cool to catch up. Mm-hmm. Cool to see her. What's cool. she doing now, boxing? She's come back to powerlifting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's why That's why she was there. So Meg, Meg was in like this hidden leg area because I was getting juicy up a body pump. Uh, and she texted me and she's like, I think I'm squatting next to Steffi Cohen. And I'm like, you probably are. So I came out and she was. And then Steffi grabbed us for a spot. And then she got stuck in her knee sleeve, so I pulled her out of her knee sleeves. And then we just kept training. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Sorry, I'm going to quickly go to the bathroom. Sweet. What was after that? Uh, after that, we went to Texas. Texas. So you we said you had the best barbecue you've ever had there in Texas? Well, there were so many highlights, but there were two spots in particular – the one, one on the very last day was called Panthers. That yeah. was amazing. And then there was this other one that's not – it's a little bit more modern or mm. in, innovative. Like it was like modern day barbecue. Yeah. Um, and that was amazing. That place was called Leroy and Lewis and I loved that. And then – I can't remember. The tagline was like modern food cooked traditionally yeah, or something, something like, that. like that. So instead of having like brisket and short rib, they had flat iron and maybe a sirloin or something mm. that they had smoked – and then sausages and all the rest of it. That was incredible. Did any of those, you gave one of those five out of five? Was no? that Leroy and, Leroy and Lewis? I, I gave think. Leroy and Lewis and Panther City both got the highest ratings of yeah, the trip. For, yeah, for taste. For taste. Yeah, nice. And both of them got five out of five for taste. Nice. Yeah. And we went to Franklin Barbecue, which is, I think, it's got to be one of the most famous barbecue spots in the whole of America. It's the most famous barbecue spot in the world. Is it? Yeah. That was the four hour wait one. Yeah. That was what I wanted to ask. Yeah, oh. was yeah. that the, the long wait? Yeah. We, we, we were so like, it was worth it? It was worth it because it was such an experience to wait yeah. four hours for yeah. something. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I'd say that it tasted better than the other places. Yeah. I think it's just been around for so long that it's become like a bit of a, um, like a, not, not monument. Uh, what's the word I'm looking in- for? Institution. An institution. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it was worth it in the sense that it's like bucket list, bucket bucket list. list barbecue. Like if you're into... Like me being into barbecue, when I look at stuff and read stuff, everyone's influenced by Franklin's. Mm. So it was it was cool to go there, see it in the flesh. Like there were people that set up hammocks overnight, that camped oh out God. overnight to be the first in line. Wow. And there were those chairs, you know, those barbecue chairs where you can put your little beer in the thing. Yeah, and little camp, camp chair. Little yeah. Chairs, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, my goodness. So it, it was worth it for the experience and to do it. And honestly, it didn't feel like – four hours sounds like a long time. It didn't feel like that. Yeah, because we were talking to people the whole yeah, time. We made, yeah, we made some friends in line and, and chatted to them most of the time. It was particularly busy because we didn't realize that that was the weekend just gone of the eclipse, like yeah, the we total g- eclipse. We land, yeah. So we were in the sky when the eclipse happened. Oh. Did you see it? Well, Thomas I, did. So I – I knew an eclipse was coming, but I, I wasn't looking for it. So we were flying and it went really dark all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, it must be going through a storm cloud. 
Like I had, had no idea what was happening. I was asleep. And then half an hour later, it was bright again or, or like about that amount of time. Like, that's weird. And then we landed and the guy's like, did you see the eclipse? And I'm like, oh, well, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, but so yeah, we, we landed the day of the eclipse and we went there the day after. I heard that the tourism that created the eclipse was about the same as the Taylor Swift Eras tour. Like oh a lot of gosh. a lot of money. Yeah. People flying different places just so they could wow. w- witness it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so four hours didn't feel that long because it was no. it was, a, it was fun. We were just in a good mood. Yeah, um, so I of all, like, Franklin got a high rate. Leroy and Lewis and Panther City got the highest ratings. But I'd still rate my friends Stefan and Sydney as the best barbecue I've ever had. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he still, <laughs> he still beats them. Wow. Um, but, yeah, that was cool. We went to the Texas Barbell Ooh. factory, like mm-hmm. where, where Texas is actually made. Because uh, I was going back and forth with the Texas people because they're sponsoring the Zero Pro and APL Nationals. Uh, and we can be quite slow to communicate sometimes, both of us. And it just so happened the day before we went to Dallas, he replied to an email. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure these guys are like only 20 minutes out of Dallas. So I looked them up on the map and I'm like, hey, we're there tomorrow. Do you want to hang out? And I went there with no expectations. Uh, and the guys were really cool. We stayed mm. there for like an hour and just hung out and chatted and... I got to meet Buddy Caps, who invented the Texas barbell, uh, like the old man, because it's a family-run business. Mm. They're all like uh, brother-in-law or dad and son, and like it was really cool. Um, and they were the, just the hospitality was sick, and they were showing me all all the different bars they have that I hadn't heard of and hadn't seen. Uh, they're sending us one to test out, and uh, saw our order for Christchurch, saw our order for APL. It was like it was really cool. So That's cool. awesome. Yeah. Oh, so is Buddy Caps the guy that invented them? Yeah, his name's Buddy Caps. Because it's on the end of all the bar. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I was just, because their, their company name is like Buddy Caps PTY or, tell you, or whatever. I always thought that was just like Caps, like the cap of the barbell. That's what I th- yeah. always thought it was. Yeah, but it's, no, the guy's name is Buddy Caps. Oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, we, we were crazy. talking to, to Brian as the guy and he's like, oh, let me introduce you to Buddy. And I'm like, this is like the Buddy Caps. <laughs> he's like, yeah. And I, my dog's nice. name's Buddy. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. Yeah, so that was cool. They gave us a bunch of merch as well. Sent us out happy. Gave us a barbecue recommendation that we yes, went to. Yes, we went there too. That place was good. Pecan Lodge. Yeah. Pecan. Uh, pecan. Um, we went to, because uh, we enjoyed, I'd never been to a comedy show. And mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. So Meg took me to another one in Dallas. Dallas Comedy Club. That was pretty funny. That was funny. Yeah. The, the, the main act, that guy, the New Yorker, who just kept on taking the piss on himself because he was so metro and... Yeah. That was really funny. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I can't make jokes because I'm just like a white guy. <laughs> so he was keeping it really tame. He was hilarious. Um, what else? We so went to Destination Dallas. It's a big gym. I went there with Daniel a few years ago, so that was cool to go again. Which one was that one again? The one where the kids had put all their stuff over all the combos and then went and trained oh, elsewhere. Yeah, oh. that was okay. Rude. Um And we caught up with your client, Zach, in oh, San yeah. Antonio. We, yeah, we went and saw Zach, Zach Whitteson. Went and saw Big Zach's. Uh, he's cool. Mm-hmm. He's a cool, dude. Oh, cool. where's he? San Antonio, did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in a in a funny in a funny turn of events. So, the guy that he was talking to us about, you might not have heard, um, but he's all over the wall. His wife and him run a nutrition course, and Rochelle's doing the nutrition course at the moment. Oh, I didn't hear. Oh, yeah. yeah so that was random, but mm-hmm. cool. Um, and then we fin- finished off in San Fran. Mm. And go, oh, we spent time with Deb. We haven't mentioned Deb. Yeah, so Deb is Dan Green's like first ever client. She's seventy four years old. She's the best. She's a powerlifter, so she like deadlifts over. She deadlifts like one twenty, benches forty five. Competing in June, isn't it? Yeah, deadlifts. I think eighty or ninety. Us uh, the squats eighty or ninety. Uh, but I met her on the plane with Dan yeah. Green on the way over, and we hung out with her. Like she hung out with me and Lily when we were at the cage. And then we, we caught up with her and had a caught up with her on the way and the way out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Cute. Yeah, so she's she's our little friend. Went and hung out with her. That was that was great. Mm-hmm. She's awesome. Had the best pastry of my life. Yes. Oh, so was that in San Fran? Oh, yeah. it was what in San Fran. Was it? It, the place called the place is called Arsa Cult. They have two locations, and I just I think I might have seen a TripAdvisor article about it being top five pastries in America, and I was like, oh, I'd be keen to try it. Not really expecting to like be sent back into my childhood and he, like just see rainbows <laughs> and flowers all around me. It was incredible, and I have tried so many pastries <laughs> in my life. That it, that was 
uh, just yeah. mind-blowingly good. You you guys know I don't really care about pastries, mm. right? Like I don't I don't go ham over them. If I go to San Francisco again by myself somewhere, like not with Meg, I will drive out of the way to go to that wow. place. That's, that's, that's how good it was. Amazing. Like, Unreal. It was amazing. Never had anything like it. Yeah. And that's our trip. What about your trip? <laughs> Tell us about Bali. It's fucking, uh, well, it's not going to match No, Nowhere near as exciting <laughs> yeah. as yours. What do you mean? It was well, relaxing. It's a well, completely different kind of holiday. Yeah, yeah. it was okay. a full relaxation holiday. Yeah. A little bit of partying, a lot of relaxing, a lot of eating. A little bit. A little, little <laughs> bit of training. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you recreate that video I sent you? The, which, which one was it again? The guy like doing curls and smoking. Oh yeah, uh. <laughs> you couldn't smoke at any of the gyms that yeah. we went to. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> what was the first gym we went to? That was Bull Gym Bali in Chenggu. That's where all the hard out bodybuilders go. Yeah, Bull Gym. There was Is that no the one with all the yellow equipment. Nah, like really red. old. No, red. it's all red. Yeah. And it was it had the most uneven floor. I was trying to do squats. I was going to try and stick to some kind of routine with my program, and the floor was like slanted oh. like that. Oh. I put seventy kilos on the bar, and that was all I could manage. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like squatting at Narang. Yeah, that's <laughs> what that was like. It was a fucking awesome. Uh, it was an awesome gym though. Like if you're a hardcore yeah. bodybuilder, that's your gym. Yeah. No air con, so it got really really hot very quickly. Was BK there? No, but that's where he trains. Okay. Is yeah. that where he trains? Yeah. Oh, I didn't mm. know that. Yeah, that's where he trains. Yeah. How funny. Were the gyms expensive? Well, surprisingly, yeah, because we went to we went to two and it was like twenty twenty five dollars for a casual session, and then on the last day we were there, or the second last day we were there, we found this gym. It was literally called the Flash Gym, yeah, and it was just around the corner from our hotel, and it was only ten dollars. Oh. Yeah. So we could have been going there the whole time. That yeah. place was really nice. Because I I remember when I went, everything was cheap except the gym. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was just working out. I've been to thirteen countries. And that was my favorite holiday I've ever been on. That's it. Yeah, mm. that was that was up there. That was so good. Yeah, it was so good. Very well, sad to leave. Normally, like you know, when you're excited to come home and you've sure. had enough, and we're oh. like, no, we could spend another few days. Yeah, we weren't ready to go. Yeah, it was good. I miss the cigarettes. <laughs> 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 Did yeah. I so many. I got so many mixed messages about that. More good than bad, but more, more like, people found it refreshing. More people were like, oh, mm. that's so cool to see. You're just normal. As a coach, I'm like, yeah. Most coaches are normal too. Um, <laughs> it's it's a funny stigma, hey. Yeah, yeah. Like, why is it why is it okay to drink occasionally, but if you have a smoke occasionally, you're, yeah, you, it's like oh, that's bad. Mm, yeah, that's bad for your health. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it was just it was fun. Like just we the way we did it, we just uh both at hotels. Bridget booked a really fancy uh, resort for our second. Uh, half of the holiday, and that's the fanciest resort I've ever stayed in. That's yeah, the, so the nice. breakfast looks sick. Yeah, oh. it was. That was the highlight of my day. Yeah, <laughs> getting up for that brekkie. <laughs> and then, uh, um, yeah, so we'd uh, what we'd do is we'd have our brekkie at the buffet. Uh, we'd go train or do something, and then we just jump. We we got a scooter, and we just jump on the scooter and, and cruise around and find stuff to do. Yeah, same thing. What like Meg, what you did? You'd find food places, and we would just find all the best food spots. James was really good for that, finding all these good little cafes and restaurants oh, and stuff awesome. to go to. Yeah, and then we'd do that. Um, and yeah, we pretty much just ate, relaxed in the sun, drunk cocktails, and it was just the most relaxing time. Like, you know, like after a holiday, you need a holiday. Yeah. To, but we were like. It was so like yeah. we were actually refreshed. The yeah, only re- regret is getting an overnight flight on the way home because we're like, oh yeah, that'll be good. We'll get a whole last day in Bali and then we can sleep on the plane and then we'll be fresh on Sunday. We didn't sleep. I at was going to say you didn't sleep at all, <gasps> no. did you? No. It was so uncomfortable. <laughs> oh. yeah. It was so bad. So we were so tired when we got back. Oh my gosh. But yeah. yeah, took a nap on Sunday and I got to uh, even train at like one of uh, Asia's premier like MMA facilities while yeah. I was over there. Yeah, sick. Bali MMA. And that was fucking awesome. It was very cool. It was mind blowing. Did you get schooled? No. Nah, well, actually, the day Bridget came and watched, I was like, he did really well. It was cool. I was like, fuck yeah, nothing more impressive. Like, it was a good feeling your girlfriend being there and watching you put on a clinic. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, I've never got so many subs in a one training session in my life. But then you said the next time you went back, that was without me, didn't you get? Um, yeah, I got pumped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so w- when you went there, were, was it people like you who were on on holiday and just having a punt, or was it like locals that were? There's locals. Some people were there for training camps. Yeah. Um, they got Changu Fight Night coming up, which is like one of Asia's biggest uh promotions and it's on ufc fire pass so it's a big promotion so people are there for training camps for that yeah uh there's a huge jiu-jitsu camp right there at the moment run by craig jones who's like yeah he got there the day that we left mm. which was so sad that would have been really cool to meet him yeah so there's a like um it's like the hub for uh, like training camps kind of yeah. like how thailand is for muay thai yeah. lots of people go to there because it's cheap to live and yeah train but um yeah that was really cool um 
but yeah, like the first day, my first round I had, because I was like, I'm just going to flow. I'm going to chill because I'm on holiday. I don't want to get injured. And then the first guy I rolled with, he's an MMA fighter. And he had headgear on. So I was like, all right. from Perth. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. so cool. Uh, his, his fight name is Pretty Boy Baise. And he fights an eternal, so he's an MMA fighter. And he said to me straight away, he goes, are we going to flow or are we sparring? And I just said, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and literally like two minutes into it, we were both going balls to the <laughs> wall. <laughs> and the, it was a 15 minute round. And um, it was fucking so much fun though. And so that was my hardest round. And then I had heaps of other roles with dudes from America. Uh, oh, there was a guy from Romania? He was from fucking Romania? huge and he terrifying. He was enormous. <laughs> and then afterwards, because that was like the hardest one yeah. people, like to, to look that at. And then afterwards, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm a beginner. Yeah. <laughs> so technically, that wasn't the hardest, but he was just so – he was humongous. Yeah. And I was really like, this kind of scary. And then um, – <laughs> but there was one clip where I snapped him down real bad. Yeah. I, I just grabbed both my hands on him and – and he just went hit the floor so hard. And then didn't you tap out? Was the last guy was he a black belt? Yeah, yeah. I got a black belt. That's so cool. That's uh, I've tapped out. I've got two submissions ever in training on black belts, and he was one of them. So it was uh, pretty cool. Nice. Mm. Very, very cool. Is it like you know, like when you do a big squat day, how how fatigued you feel after? Mm -hmm. Is it is it similar? Because it, like it's almost like a sprint. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Like it's lots of uh, same thing. Lots of uh really high output in short periods of time. Yeah. Mm. So you just fucking gas. But, you know, like after squatting, your shoulders are sore, your back sore, your legs are sore. Like, jiu is weird. It's like your fingers and your, oh. like your yeah. joints. And yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's achy like that. Mm. Um, so that was really cool. Um, but now the highlights were pretty much just, I don't Every know. Every day was a highlight. Yeah. Me and Bridget are both very uh, cruisy people. So it was just, it was no... Uh, See any cool cultural like temples or anything yep. yeah. like that? We yeah. went to GWK. I forgot the real name of it, but it's the. Is it high? Is it bigger than the Statue of Liberty? Way We're trying bigger. to figure it out. Yeah, is it like the fifth biggest statue in the world? Technically, the third wow. biggest statue in the third world. Biggest. But because it's got the building underneath it, it's not classified as a statue. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, and then we went to the monkey temples. Uh, that but that was, was scary. No, that's terrifying. So we got out of there. Monkeys pretty. are scary. Yeah, they're Ooh, freaky. They're ass. terrifying. Mm. James got his phone out to film one, and then it like hissed at him. <gasps> yeah, and, and then it stole this guy's sunglasses and right off. Like <laughs> when I, as soon as I got my phone out, this other monkey ran across one hiss. I was like, "Fuck, it's gonna steal my phone." So then our we had a um, a driver, and he was like. Um, like our guide, and he got this big stick and he's just like whacking <laughs> it at the monkeys to get them away. But then there was this little stray puppy and they all started surrounding this puppy and so we were trying to scare them away from the puppy. One, one tried to hump the puppy. Yeah. So there was like 20 of them and this big monkey jumped on his back and I was like, give me that stick. So I grabbed the stick off our driver and I was like, fuck, I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen him scared. It's funny. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because... Like side by side, you're quite, you're a bit bigger than a monkey, yeah. Yeah. but they like they just ah, yeah. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> they're, so they're savage. Oh, How funny is that though? We were talking about this. They're both wild animals, but because like our love for dogs, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we've just sided with the one yeah, dog. Yeah, sided with the dog. <laughs> I, I went to a monkey temple kind of thing in in Japan once, and it had signs like the season they were in, it's like, and, and they said specifically, don't make eye contact with the monkeys, especially the males. I'm like, they're monkeys. <laughs> so I went up and I looked at one and it was just like, <laughs> it was like, ah! <laughs> it's the scariest mode oh. of my life. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're actually terrifying. Uh, eh? Oh my God. Because we were going to keep walking down along the, like along the wall. To the other temples. Yeah, yeah. and there were so many monkeys along there and we just were like, no. Nah. So we turned why around are and went back. Why are their teeth so sharp when they eat fruit and vegetables? Aren't they om omnivorous? Are they? Yeah. they really? They eat little little animals oh. as well. Yeah. Do they really? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. They're like us. Yeah, okay. This is um this is really random because that's my second time going to Bali. But we went to, I can't remember what it was, in Uluwatu. I thought this was really beautiful considering the whole world fights about this. There's this one oh, road, yeah. and they've got a mosque, a big, beautiful mosque. Next to it is a Christian church. Yeah. Next to it is a Buddhist temple, and then next to it's a Hindu. It's a Hindu. Temple. So it's all religions on the same street, and they're big, beautiful churches. And I was just like, man, that's cool. Like harmony. It was really, yeah. really awesome to see. Nice. Mm. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, other than that, we're actually going back soon. Anyway, for a week, we got a wedding. Um. So yeah, I've told you about that. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have now. <laughs> but yeah, so um, we're excited to go back for a week. Yeah, we can't wait. We're gonna book another couple of nights at that same we've actually same hotel. Yeah, we booked a villa mm. with our friends and that, but we're like, no, nah, we want to get our own space for the last few yeah. days. That's nice. That'd be sick. Mm. Yeah. 
Awesome. I can't wait. Oh, and we got some tattoos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bridget yeah. got tatted up. You got a couple. Yeah, I got a cu- little 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 couple pieces. Mm, yeah. Nice. Mm. Add to the collection. Yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, we might leave it there. I've got a Wales recap, but I'll save that for next time. Sweet. Nice. Thanks, team. Good to have you back. You nice too. Nice to be back. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Zero Podcast. If you want more information, head to our Instagram, zero underscore weakness. Hit the link in the bio for all of our services and any information on upcoming workshops and events. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review so we can have a broader reach and answer more people's questions. Thank you once more.